My name is Shavo. I play in a band called System of a Down. Ouch. Bino, my brother. This is the Velvet Hammer right here. This is Bino, our manager. Hello, what's up? So, okay, you want to hear something crazy? Rewind. When we were going to release Toxicity, they were going to do a K-Rock free show. We were expecting like 5,000, 4,000 kids and like 15,000 showed up. They said you can't play, a riot broke out. Horseback and helicopters and CNN broadcasting this crazy riot in Hollywood. Crazy. Where they had to like escort us out of there. But that caused this, you know? I knew at that point that we had a juggernaut. I mean, here's a band who's had three number one records and two in a calendar year and remains probably the most credible hard rock band in the world. I'm not a giant rock star. I play one on TV though, right? <laughs> All right. Damn. We did something cool as a band, but we also like, we had to push and push and do and I was managing the system, you know, when we started. You know, it was crazy. I used to work at a bank. In between wire transfers, I would call the Roxy up and try to ask for gigs, and they would not give us a gig. I just kept calling, and they, they would hang up on me constantly. I didn't care. I nagged the dude at the Roxy so much. Dude said, well, I don't know who you are. Can you sell tickets? And they gave me 75 tickets to sell, and we sold like 150 of them. May 28, 1995, 35 people in the crowd. We got on and 150, 200 people come in and chaos happens, a big pit blows up. So imagine 20 minutes, brrr, and then like, they all left because they didn't want to see anyone else. And all of a sudden it was 30 people again. <laughs> well, I believe in always grinding. I believe in always having a goal and doing something grateful as hell. You don't even know how grateful I am. Every day I wake up and I'm fucking grateful. Nothing for granted. I've been writing, like I haven't stopped. I have so many ideas flying out of me, I just want to create. You gotta have a vision and you gotta go with it. I'm a collaborator, I'm not a solo artist, you know what I mean? I personally love to give an idea, get an idea, put an idea out there, having to do with a few of us and that's cool. You know, I think we're stronger in numbers. I kind of decided I'm gonna take a different angle. Instead of starting another band, I'm gonna start a music unit. So, cannabis has always been a part of my life. I'm gonna roll a little bit of OG. I have Mega Wellness right here from Nameless. Those guys are dope. This is like, oof, insane. People have always come up to me, we should have strains with Shavo, Shavo G, and all these like things that we can do. And so I decided, I go, why not have a cannabis brand? I met the right people and I said, I can really represent the best quality with the best vibe. I like to show excitement. I like to inspire. I like to influence. I set that up for myself and I set it up with this. This is bigger than Shavo, the system of a town. This is like something that can go fuck wild viral, you know? I've always loved creating things. I have since I can remember. I used to direct videos of skateboarding when I was 11, 12 years old with my dad's big ass VHS thing. Always been into music. Uh, my music's been like a part of me since I was born. I 
I love creating stage visuals, lighting, and system of down stage shows. Something creative, I draw, I paint. It's, it's in me. And when I don't do it, it's like, I feel like uh, I'm empty or it's, it's, I need a release. I've got a couple of new projects. I've always had a style. Parallels with lifestyle, it's what you wear to feel comfortable. So, we got together with my partner Mike. We started making clothing. We're gonna go with the more high end fabrics. We're doing a 50 micro modal Supima and 50 cotton. Make sure everything fits you perfectly. My partner Mike, he is like a brother. We ended up going to the same private school. Him and I were playing a game of basketball. And we didn't know we were those kids that met when we were really young. And there was a moment where we kind of shared something. We're like, oh, our dads were friends. Oh man, like that. So now we have a business together. We came up with the coolest logo. It's the symbol that could represent me. It's very simple lines. With three lines, you can make the logo. Exciting, congratulations, bro. It's our first shirt, I feel like crying. Ma'am, someone film this moment. Oh, you're filming. But that's after 35 years. We've gone through so much to be able to do this together. No, it's just something really dope. Said I love these shirts, I want similar fabric, similar shape. They cut it, they put it to my body, they shaped it up, and then I said, now make that for everyone. When we were coming up with names, everyone wanted it to be like Chavo Select and Yo Chavo. I'm like, dude, this is bigger than Chavo from System of a Down. I wanna give my shit to my friends. I don't want my friends to wear Chavo on their shirt. I want my friends to wear something I stand for. I pulled together a lot of things from my life and I came up with this brand called 22 Red. 22 is a number I'm born with. I'm born on April 22nd. I was married May 22nd. System of a Down was formed when I was 22. I'm 44 now, 22 years later, I started 22 Red. You know, I've always seen numbers as colors, and two has always been red. To me, red represents attraction, represents fire. It's bold, it's vivid, alarming. You know, you see a stop sign, you see a red light, it's just big. If you see 10 colors and there's one red, that red will stand the fuck out. And that's all the things that 22 is. It's like, it is me, you know? I've always loved creating things. And music was something you can create, and I thought, rad. Thousands of records, thousands. But you buy one, you wanna buy 10 more, you wanna get into something, because that's your thing. This is a record right here, one of the greatest of all time. All of these records right here in this pile are greatest of all time. Why? Because it's Led Zeppelin. I didn't have money to be able to buy all this, and when I started DJing, I had no money. I was working a part-time job. I got passionate about it. Through my years of like collecting stuff, I've collected records, CDs, DVDs, everything. 
Oh man, pinky in the brain. We gotta get this. Have a good one, man. Thanks. So we're here with Shalo Adagian. Welcome. I'm a fan of uh, expression. I'm a collaborator. I write parts and I bring them in and I see what everyone could do with it. I love being able to create. I kind of decided I'm going to take a different angle. Instead of starting another band, I'm going to start a music unit that we can just make music for ourselves and we can make music for others. It kind of became where we had so many different genres of music we were touching. Hip hop, there's rock, there's all sorts of stuff. Check this out. Ooh, did you hear that? Yo, spit to that. And I like bouncing ideas off people that I respect. It's a joy to find people to work with, you know? I was 21 when I smoked pot for the first time. I think cannabis is unfairly villainized in a lot of the world. It helps with anxiety, sleep, certain diseases. In America, I think big pharma can't have that be legal everywhere because it totally cuts their business down. You go to a doctor, what are they gonna give you? I'm gonna write a prescription for Xanax, Ambience, Benzos, Oxycontin, come on. It's bad for you, it's bad for your liver, it's chemical, you know, it might get you addicted. For me, I have a hard time sleeping sometimes. Boom, a drop of CBD puts me to sleep. What, you're gonna say that's illegal, don't use it, you're gonna go to jail for it? No. You know, so that's what I'm studying for. Nowadays, since it's like recreationally legal and I see the importance of CBD, I decided I should be a part of it. It's a passion. In 20 years, I've met the best, you know, master growers from way back, specific growers that I really find impressive, that will really do good work. We have so many incredible growers that care about the smell, the taste, how it makes you feel, and just make it an amazing product. I'm meeting growers, I'm tasting every strain, I'm making sure I would smoke this. I actually found some amazing strains. Having something that no one else has is bomb. Twenty years ago, I was in Amsterdam for one of our tours and I met a person named Aryan, the king of cannabis. He's a strain hunter. He's like world renowned. He's come up with some of those strains like Super Silver Haze and the White Widow. He invited us into this uh, smoking where we were like tasting the harvest of that year. It was like a Thanksgiving table with bowls of flour. And man, that changed my life that day. Through that, I met a lot of people in the industry. I met all the great growers and I got into their places and I'm like, dude, I like this flower. I like that flower. I like that specific one. Can you grow a room of that for me? And I've been getting seeing each plant develop and grow and get so involved. Because I'm doing this research, I get to meet all these amazing growers and all these amazing people that other people wouldn't get to meet. It makes me happy to be able to get that and bring it to them and have them experience what I experienced. Have them smoke and have them say, hey man, that made me feel good. And that took off the edge. I love making people happy. It's part of my DNA. So that's a huge part of what I'm doing.